On this week's round of Inside Oswego Speedway, we get to action right away. Twin 35 Novella Super Modified Feature Events back on June 21st. So we're going to get things kicked off with feature event number one. And it was Timmy Snyder in the zero and Randy Ritzkis in the Lock Crane Services number 37 starting on the outside of row number one. And Ritzkis, your spring champion from earlier this season, jumped out into the early race lead, leading the pack down the back, stretching into corner number three. Further back as the field files down into that third corner, everybody looking for racing room as they come out of corner number two. Dave Gruel in the a and Auto Parts car number 50 was on the move early on, working to the outside of the 50 of David Danzer down the front stretch and into corner number one trying to keep pace with the 68 of Michael Barnes and the 90 of Cody Graham. Graham looking outstanding back on June 21, working the outside of the speedway like we've never really quite seen him do before as he works to the outside of the zero of Snyder into corner number three. Barnes trying to find a way by as well. Barnes would opt to go to the low side out of that fourth corner to move up and into position number three as Graham and Barnes now would try to chase down Ritzkis out in front and eventually they would be able to close in on the number 37 into that first corner, but yellow lights would come on and slow the action for the 26 of Sean Goslin, whose bad luck continues here in 2014. Enough damage to that race car to end the night for the Goslin number 26. Back to green flag racing, Ritzkis continues to lead the way, but we'd have trouble one more time. This time in corner number four, it's the 22 of Pat Lavery. Lavery and team, they would go to work right away on this race car, the front end of that machine, to try and get things turned around. They would be able to come back out and start the second 35 lap main event. You get a look at the replay, Lavery just seems to lose control of that race car, heading into the fourth corner, tags the foam. He would be done for the remainder of this 35 lap event. Back to green one more time, Ritzkis, Graham Barnes, the top three, Gruel would work to the inside of Snyder, into corner number one to move up and into position number four, Snyder sliding back to fifth. Danzer trying to look for room on the outside as well with Michael Muldoon and Otto Sitterly running there further back. Sitterly eventually would work his way by Muldoon. Next would go to the outside of Danzer into corner number three. Sitterly started deep in this one, working through the pack, continues to lead the Novella Super Modified Series standings, striving for another top five finish here in twin 35 number one. Traffic would eventually play a role in this one. The 83 of Lulave Jr., the three of Brian Sweeney, Ritzkis and Graham would elect to go to the high side. Barnes tried to work his way to the low side out of corner number two, would touch the three of Sweeney. Sweeney would go around backwards. That would bring yellow lights on. Barnes in the 68, your winner one week ago, would have to head to pit lane. You can see here damage to that right front wing and the right front wheel of the Sorrell Racing and Hawk Jr. Motorsports number 68. Barnes would return to the racetrack, but would be out of contention for the win in this one. With Keith Champagne and Joe Gosa going at it, we had trouble once again down in corner number one, Bobby Haynes Jr., Lulave Sr., Lulave Jr., and the 0-2 of Brandon Bellinger. And LeVay clearly not happy with the 44 of Haynes as they rolled up to a stop there outside of corner number two. Haynes would show his frustration as well as the two drivers would go at it to the outside of that second corner. Lou LeVay Jr. would get involved as well, somewhat diffusing the situation, I guess you could say. Uh, the track safety crew eventually coming in would separate all of the drivers as Brandon Bellinger, you can see, eventually climbs out from the roller cage of his car, wondering what the heck was going on over there. But uh, at Oswego Speedway, we like to focus more on the racing and as the green flag came back out, Randy Ritzkis would go on to run away with the win here in twin 35 number one back on June 21, crossing the strike to victory, his second win of the 2014 season ahead of Cody Graham, Dave Gruel, Otto Sinderley, and David Dancer in the top five. Timmy Snyder would hang on to six ahead of Michael Muldoon, Keith Champagne, Joe Gosick, and Jessica Zemkin rounding out the top ten as Ritzkis climbs out in Turning Stone Resort Casino victory lane. Now they were still doing it. I figured he was probably about five car lengths or six car lengths behind me because you can almost you can tell by the photographers. They usually help you out a lot. Wow, we got a good car. Uh, the only problem is I got to start behind these guys now. So, but we got to tighten it up a little bit for that feature. I'm hoping I didn't hurt it too bad. Uh, I'm good. The, the car's been great the last two weeks, but when you start 20th and 21st, it's a little, little hard getting up here. So it's a little easier if you don't start so far back. But uh, those cautions were killing me. I was so tight, I couldn't do anything. I think if that first one came out, I might have had a shot at getting around Randy. But after that, it just I didn't really have much for him. I uh, still got something for the second feature here. So uh, we'll make a couple fine-tune adjustments, be a little bit different track with the sun going down. So. 
got a good upfront running car and make some uh, fine tune adjustments. Hopefully uh, be able to finish a couple places better in the next one. New York State's fastest action continues in the month of July. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, July 5th. It's Christmas in July. Featuring a 75 lap Grand Prix Super Modified feature. And fireworks to end the night. Bring the kids to meet Santa Claus before the racing begins. Featuring wing sprint car veteran Jessica Zepkin. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. Bring a new and unwrapped toy to the races and receive a free hot dog combo meal. Kids 16 and under free. The second of three big main events on June 21st was the 30-lap Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Main Event brought to you by Burke's Do It Best Home Centers and Helena Chemical Company. And it was Cameron Rowe and David LaTulip in the number 27 machine up there on row number one. And LaTulip blasted right out into the early race lead from the outside, pulling Rowe and John Tessarario, Danny Apt, and J.J. Andrews along with him. But as we've seen here in the past couple of weeks, there'd be trouble early on, and it was the 22 of Mike Bruce Touching the 93 of J.J. Andrews down into corner number three. The rest of the field would stack up behind him, including the 73 of Alex Hogue and the 01 of Dalton Doyle. You get a look at the replay. The 93 and the 22 come together and block up that racetrack into corner number three. Hogue would be done for the night in the 73, as two with the 01 of Dalton Doyle. The other machines would be able to refire and continue on. On the complete double file restart again, it was Latulip in that 27 car. Working out into the race lead down the back straightaway, Danny Apt in the 57 looking very good on the outside of the racetrack. Would work up there and drive his way into the runner up position. As they work out of corner number four down the front stretch, row in third, John Tessarario in the Marks Pizzeria car number 47 riding right there tight in position at number four. Further back, the one of Anthony Lacerdo trying to work to the inside of the eight of Josh Kerr. The two cars touch. Lacerdo gets down into the hub rail. Craig Harris with nowhere to go. In the 04 machine would clock the back of the Lacerdo number one, tearing the right front off of that race car. You get another look at the replay here at the incident. The eight and the one tangle. Lacerdo in the hub rail. Harris comes in from behind. So yellow lights would wave one more time. After the restart, Danny Apt would begin work on the 27 of David Latulip down in the corner, number one. Those two cars would race bumper to bumper for several laps, battling for the race lead in this one with Tessarario and Jason Simmons back there third and fourth. And you can see creeping into the screen, the 18 of Andrew Shartner, again coming from the back side of the field. Well, Danny Apt finally would find the high side out of corner number four down the front straightaway, but the two cars would touch down into corner number one as Amp gets sideways in the 57. Yellow lights would come on as the five of Tim Garou and the eight of Josh Kerr would spin. Apt obviously would be sent to the tail side of the field. David Latulip would as well, and that would give the lead to the 47 of John Tessarario, inheriting the top spot, looking for his first career. Oswego Speedway win as Andrew Shartner now works to the high side of the 98 of Jason Simmons to take over the runner-up spot. As Shartner trying to work his way to the front, looking for his third win of the season with Barry Kingsley and Jack Patrick going at it. Further back in the field, white flag in the air. Tessarario and Shartner went at it earlier this season. Shartner would get the upper hand, but this time out of corner number four, the win would go to the 47 of John Tessarario, his first career main event victory at Oswego Speedway over Shartner, Simmons, Kingsley, and Patrick in the top five. Timmy Garou would come home to finish sixth and have Camden Proud in seventh. John Tessarario, very happy down there in victory lane, would talk to Keith Zare about his first feature victory. I felt bad for him because there's no way somebody's getting by me tonight. Oh, uh, it was good. Like today, you know, we slipped up a little bit at the beginning there. Let a couple guys get by us. I thought Danny was going to get by David and, and take the win tonight, but uh, unfortunately, mishap for them. And we were able to capitalize on it and yeah, you know, put the pedal down and don't even look back. Yeah, uh, not well enough. One spot too short. It was uh, it was a good run though. Uh, testament to my guys once again. Awesome job. Car's perfect every week for me. Uh, I you know that John earned that one. I gave everything I could to him and. Uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate to see the amount of cars are getting torn up. We definitely got to do something about that because that's no fun. But it's, uh, it's nice to be out here, and hopefully we can get uh, Mike back and uh, doing this again with us, and hopefully he recovers quickly, and I know Mark's feeling a little better. Yeah, so we got heat in the tires and went on. Uh, you know, the car got tighter and tighter, so we just kind of were hanging on there. Um, I knew John was running a great race. Congrats to him. Um, Andrew's fast. But I'm, uh, we started 12th. I'm happy with the third-place finish tonight. 
Shardner continues to lead the championship standings over Patrick, Kingsley, Harris, and Simmons now into the top five. New York State's fastest action continues in the month of July. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, July 5th, it's Christmas in July. Featuring a 75-lap Grand Prix Super Modified feature. And fireworks to end the night. Bring the kids to meet Santa Claus before the racing begins. Featuring Wings Sprint Car veteran Jessica Zepkin. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. Bring a new and unwrapped toy to the races and receive a free hot dog combo meal. Kids 16 and under, free. Third and final main event on Saturday night. May have been one of the best super modified races we've seen in Oswego Speedway in quite some time. You can be the judge of that here watching the highlights on Inside Oswego Speedway. Stephen Joy in the nine, Timmy Snyder in the zero. Started the final 35 lap main event from row number one with Snyder catching the early advantage from the outside with Keith Champagne in the 55 working to the top side as well. Around the nine of Joy down into corner number three His Randy Ritzkis gets a little sideways there in the third corner. Michael Barnes in the 68 able to take advantage down the front straightaway. Keep an eye once again on the 90 of Cody Graham as he works to the top side out of corner number two. But in trying to do so, he and the 52 of Danzer touch out of that second corner and Danzer would spin to the inside of the speedway. Bringing the yellow lights on in the number 52 machine. We'll get a look here at the replay one more time. Graham trying to work up there. Danzer, the right rear of the Danzer 52, came together with the left front of the Graham number 90. And that immediately sent the 52 of Danzer around on the back straightaway. He would restart from the tail side of the field. On the restart, Snyder would continue to lead the way over Champagne, Muldoon, Joya, and Danny Connors in the top five. But again, it was Barnes and the Sorrell Racing number 68 working to the inside of the speedway into corner number three and the Graham number 90 working to the top side into corner number one going around the five of Tim Devendorf and the 01 of Connors in just two corners down the back chute. Barnes would try to follow suit and would do so. Also working to the high side of the five of Devendorf down into corner number three. With Snyder running away early on, Michael Muldoon moved up into the runner-up spot, working to the inside of Champagne into corner number three as Graham would try to find racing room as well as they went bumper to bumper down the front straight into corner number one. With Muldoon going low, Graham would choose to go to the high side one more time in that extreme chassis down the back chute into the third corner and Graham looking very good early on again here in twin 35. Number two would move into third, closing in on the back bumper of the Michael Muldoon car number 51. Well, Grant would slide high one time there into that third corner, leaving the low lane open for Barnes down the front straight. But Graham able to battle back on the high side to hang on to that third position as they file down the back stretch into corner number three one more time. Snyder continuing to lead the way. Well, eventually the front four would close in all together. Barnes again trying to work the inside down the front straightaway into corner number one. Graham tried to battle back again on the high side, but was unable to do so this time. Move Barnes in the 68 now up into position at number three. Graham, however, looks like he fell back a little bit, but you can see here he was able to regroup as the field now closes in on the 56 of Howl Tulip to put that car one lap down. Barnes works to the bottom one more time, thinking he may be able to get an advantage, but was unable to do so. Muldoon was able to fight back on the high side this time as Snyder, Muldoon, Barnes, and Graham would go at it for several laps here, first through fourth. The field now, working out on that second corner, you're gonna see a puff of smoke this time. Out of the engine on the zero of Snyder, that car chugging just a little bit in the third corner, three wide in the corner number three. Barnes moves to the race lead. Muldoon on the high side, loses the handle, locks it up in corner number four. Yellow lights would come on as it looked as though Muldoon was no doubt gonna go into the inside hub rail. That would put the zero of Snyder back into the race lead, but most knew the engine was souring on that car, and again they go three wide into corner number one. This time, Barnes makes the move. He's able to hold on to it. Cody Graham with a tremendous drive on the top side of the speedway to go by Snyder to take the runner-up spot. Is the rest of the field now trying to find racing room by the zero of Snyder, including the 50 of Gruel, the seven of Sitterly, and the 99 of Joey Payne. Eventually, Gruel able to work by on the high side. Sitterly would make the move as well, but Barnes 
pulling away out in front and for two consecutive weeks now, the Sorrell Racing Hawk Jr. Fabrication Machine of Michael Barnes would drive to victory lane as Barnes gets the win in twin 35, number two over Graham and Gruel, second and third once again. Otto Sitterly in the seven, Joey Payne came home for a top five finish in 99, ahead of Randy Ritzkis, your twin 35, number one winner in position number six. As one more time, Michael Barnes pulls that number 68 machine down into Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane for win number two on the season in back-to-back -back weeks as Joey Hawksby and Eric Sorrell join their driver in Victory Lane. Well, uh, I can see, I think Timmy was having some odor problems and uh, he was losing some power. It just happened to be in the right place at the right time and uh, we made a move. I knew I'd get it clean, and then the caution come out, and I had a feeling on the restart he was going to bog down again, so I just kept her low. I knew Cody, I think Cody had a better car, really. Uh, he was he was an animal on the outside tonight. I mean, my hat's off. That was a lot of fun racing with him. He drove a, we drove a wicked clean race together. I mean, uh, it was a lot of fun. Just uh, a great night. I can't say enough about my team. Throw race and Joey Hawksby. Uh, these guys worked real hard. I screwed up in the first one, and... Uh, just got a little impatient. I apologize to Brian Sweeney for uh, getting in the back of him there. I didn't, didn't mean to do that, but I think all my sponsors, uh, Hawk Jr. Chassis, Doug Holmes, Finger Lakes Performance, Gaffney's Lawn Care, Scribe of Town Inn, HRW Construction, all the, just everybody that's associated with this team, Mark's Pizzeria, um, we couldn't do it without him. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was uh, me and Dave got together, but I was stuck up on the outside, but I wasn't up close enough for him to see me. And we got together, and after that, the car was actually kind of out to launch. I was fighting it all over, but I mean, I give it to him. He made a hell of a move down into one, and I really can't complain here in that one. So, well, this 35 lap race was like a sprint car race, and we just had to push it every lap, and uh, wasn't quite sure where we were going to have left for tires, and you know, pretty big difference uh, between the first feature and second feature, with the uh, sun being out earlier, and you know, obviously cooling down a little bit tonight. But I think my crew made the right calls and uh, got us back up on the podium again. Can't complain with two uh, third place finishes. With another top five finish. Otto Sitterly continues to lead the series standings ahead of Dave Gruel, Randy Ritzkis, David Dancer, and Pat Lavery in the top five positions.